Howdy, AP Breakout. It is another log video. So this is um, 212, logarithmic function manipulation. Okay, so apparently I jumped the gun when I taught these properties in 29. Okay, whatever. Um, so here they are. I already taught them. Um, so let's just go jump in here. This is equal to log base 4 of x times y. We can squish addition together with multiplication. This is log base 3. Subtraction gets squished together with division. That's a 5 over z. Um, this one, okay, so be careful. Compare these two. They're not the same. Um, and we're going to, I'm going to show you how we know what's, what's happening here. Okay, so one way to think about this is, well, I don't need the 10. That's understood. But I could think of this as being minus log of 5 plus log of z, because I factored out the negative from those. So those two are going to get squished together with multiplication. And now subtraction gets squished together with division. And so this equals log of x over 5z. Another way to think about it is, OK, positive goes to the top, negative goes to the bottom. <coughs> OK, um, continuing on. The intermediate step, which you may or may not need, is that this is x cubed minus log base 2 of y. So the, the number out in front becomes the exponent. And so then I can squish this together with division. This one, OK, so um, it, the positive stays on the top and the negative goes to the bottom. You could see a little more clearly, oops, sorry. If I, if I rewrite this to log base 7 of, oh, that's it. I started to write my a too soon. 7 of a plus log base 7 of 4 minus 5 log base 7 of b. Okay, you can see that those two would get squished together with multiplication, and this is going to stick around um, and stay behind as division. Um, so this becomes log of base 7 of a squared. Well, okay, I'll show every step. Well, until I run out of room. The number became the exponent. And now, 4 times a squared, so then I end up with log base 7 of 4a squared over b to the fifth. I could have shown you the step where I put those together, but I didn't have enough space. OK, so let's look at this next one. On this one, what I think what we can always do is what I like to call a funky form of 1. We can always multiply by 1. If you multiply by 1, nothing has changed. Well, notice we have a log base 6 here. So I need somehow to introduce a log base 6 here. So what I can do is I can say, well, this is 2 times log base 6 of 6 because log base 6 of 6 is 1. This right here is what I like to call a funky form of 1. And then I have plus log base 6 of x. So this becomes log base 6 of 36, 6 squared is 36, plus log base 6 of x. Our final answer becomes log base 6 of 36x. You can put the parentheses, but you don't have to. OK, so which one is equivalent here? This becomes log base 3 of x squared minus log base 3 of y. That 2 can come out front. There's an equal sign. 2 log base 3 of x minus log base 3 of y. Did that show up here? Be aware that it's not in both of them. Like it was only, the 2 only affected the, the term with the x. So this is our answer. Let's keep going. Okay, so remember with the exponential functions, we could describe them as a horizontal shift or a vertical stretch. Well, we now can do a horizontal stretch, a horizontal dilation that can correspond with a vertical shift. Um, so let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, if I take this, if I have f of x, I can rewrite this as log of 6 plus log of x because this multiplication can be split apart with addition. Well, this is saying, okay, here is... Um, g is equal to log of x. So here's g. So f of x right here is equal to log of 6 plus g of x. That means the vertical translation f of x is equal to, that means this k value is equal to log of 6, which is a constant. I don't know what it is. It's somewhere between 0 and 1 because log of 10 is equal to 1. But I don't exactly know where it is. Uh, yeah, I think I'm right. OK, we also talked about the change of base property too soon. So here we go. OK, so on this one, they're wanting us to show that f is a vertical. OK, so here's f, and here's um, g. 
Okay, so f is going to be equal to something times g. Okay, so let's look at f. f was equal to log base 4 of x. Well, notice g has log base 9. So what we can do is we can use the change of base using that base of 9. Okay, the 4 came down here, the x was on top, and then we changed it, we had the same base. Okay, so another way to write this is that this is 1 over log base 9 of 4 times log base 9 of x. This is, and this right here was our g of x. So the k value here is 1 over log base 9 of 4. Okay, that's good enough for our purposes. Um, I'm trying to think, can I use a negative exponent? It's 1 minus, yeah, well, you know what, let's just stop here. I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. Okay, um, which of the following is equivalent here? Well, so this becomes the natural log. Um, natural log just means it has a base of e. So this is not, all the properties are still the same. Minus natural log of y to the fourth. Subtraction gets squished together with division. Natural log of x cubed over y to the fourth. Um, x cubed y to the fourth, there it is. Dun, 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 dun. Um, one thing, I don't know, I may have put this on the practice or the, or the review or something. Um, we've done problems, and I haven't had a chance to look at AP Classroom, but we might see something like, it says like natural log of 2 is equal to A, natural log of 3 is equal to B. Um, express um, the natural log of 18 in terms of A and B, is what the directions would say. Well, so what I know is that this is the natural log 18 is... 2 times, well, 3 squared. 2 times 9 is 18, 9 is 3 squared. So I can break this apart and say this is the natural log of 2 plus the natural log of 3 squared, which is equal to, now this 2 can come out to the front, natural log of 2 plus 2 times the natural log of 3. And now what I know is that the natural log of 2 is equal to A, so I can substitute that out. Natural log of 3 right here, I don't know why I'm using circles and triangles, but whatever, is this is plus 2, the triangle was B. Now, every year I have kids do the wrong thing, and they'll tell me they'll tell me A plus B squared. That is not true. Don't write that. Okay, um, it's two times that value that was B. So I like to do those. I haven't seen it so far in some of the AP material, but if I were writing an AP test, I would do that. I think it's fun. All right, go practice. Good luck.